Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Light Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I'm joined by the infamous Peter Hammerman, and we're going to be talking about building rovers. But more importantly, we're going to be showing you how to construct one, and how to construct one to a great level of detail. So we've just started the basic frame here. So this is a free wide frame, and the first thing we need to take in consideration is how many wheels are we actually going to have on the build. So as Hammerman's actually marked out here, you can see that three red block area is the distance that the wheels will take up. Any closer than that, and the wheels will just basically not be able to be placed. So now that we've placed the wheels on the chassis, Hammerman has pointed out a few different bits. First off, we've got the one block spacing between the wheels at a very minimum, so they could turn and not crash into each other, as well as the suspension needing to be in the right upright position so you can see the actual shop absorber in there as well as that larger sort of nut or bolt on the top there as well so let's get on to the next stage of building the, the next step that we need to do is add ourselves in a cockpit um, and after we've had ourselves in a cockpit we also need to start thinking about the systems that we're going to need on board what we're going to power it reactors batteries are we going to have oxygen connecting up to the cockpit hammerman's currently pondering of how he's going to do the design here himself in the head but you can see the chassis has been turned all to gray it's also been cut down and when it comes to the cockpit we've really got ourselves two options if you want to get really fancy we can go with the standard sort of seats and then use remote control block but if you want it for a more survival basic sense then it's probably a lot more advisable to go with one of the issued cockpits that you can sit inside of and you're a little bit protected as well so as hammerman's been building through this he's been talking about how important it is to build all the key components on the inside before you start decorating. Uh, once you start adding them extra blocks to the exterior, you're basically limiting the amount of space you have to work with or add these components in after. Basically, by putting them in and making sure you have a connector on the back to start with, with your design, it makes it easy to access. And at the same time, when it comes to decorating, you just put the blocks on the exterior. So we've built a little bit further. Peter Hammond's now added himself two reactors to either side um, the other thing that we need to check is a backup reactor say the vehicle becomes short on power or it's left abandoned we need some way of basically jump starting it by sticking some uranium in there other great ways of powering these or the main way Hammond likes to power them is by batteries but that means you do have to keep them recharged on the final point is center of mass of the vehicle if you're building not to follow the contours or you decide to build a bit uneven on one side you then have the situation where the center of mass is going to shift and it won't be in the center he recommends sticking it right between the wheels here so as you travel over the different terrains your ship or your craft is not going to tilt so let's continue on and see what he's got for us next. So the next step, as you can see, Hammerman is testing out the vehicle. Now the importance of this is to see how the vehicle handles, see how the suspension's moving, and more importantly, see if we've got that mass right. And as you can see, them four wheels are doing absolutely great over the terrain. We've also added that turret on for a little bit of protection since this is going to be a survival build, but Hammerman's having no problems getting over the terrain. We'll have to hear what sort of suspension or vehicle adjustments, if any, is going to do so from the skeleton me and hammerman have both built our exteriors basically making these ships look a hell of a lot more beautiful hammerman's gone with a nice three color i think it's a three or four color color scheme we've got the oranges we've got the whites we've got the blacks and we've got the grays and you can see some of the really nice detail parts in here he's stuck himself a little number plate on there that says hammer you can see the detailing on the actual bumpers themselves as well as the mud guards that is sloped in there as well some really great ways of just just enhancing that basic rover concept and then towards the back you can see we've got a rear number plate we've got two little thrusters quite cool there you could also have them exhaust Hammerman tried to um, destroy one of them so it let out a bit of smoke he's got his rear brake lights and turn signals there as well on my design I was it went a little bit simpler we've just got a basic rear bumper to stop any ramming We've got a grey wraparound that goes around the sort of reactor, well not the reactor, the battery box, as well as a little bit of protection to protect the actual oxygen tank there as well. But like Hammerman said before, if these are non-combat vehicles, they don't really need too much protection in them areas. If they are combat vehicles, he recommends using heavy armour. So that was mine and Hammerman's take on building either your first rover or just a way of building a rover in space engineers in general build it up in the necessary stages and you'll come up with a very clean design should we test these out hammond and just see how they drive uh, sure all right let's hop in and take them for a spin i'll follow you so i've got a nice perspective 
Let's see what we can do. We haven't tested these for suspension, have we yet? And I've got a feeling that these are going to be rather bad. You know, rear heavy. Can, can be pretty wicky. Yeah, so we're going to be quite quick, but at the same time, we'll just have to see how all that weight at the back is going to do them rovers any good. Oh, it seems to be performing quite well. It's not it's not rolling over as of yet. But yeah, they're nice. They're two quite nice little patrol vehicles, these. I can imagine these being part of a faction or something. Going out on a little patrol mission, or even just using it, you know, to guard you from different bits when you're mining. Let's try doing this little jump over here. See how well they do over the terrain. There we go. Oh, look at that big jump. See if we can land it. Oh, there we go. What do you think about sticking gyroscopes on these so you can basically control um, your jumps? Uh, the gyros are great uh, if you have problems with, with uh, steering uh, wheels. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the I was using uh, before the update gyros to stabilize uh, the vehicle so they do not uh, roll uh, often. But mm. now with this physic we can exclude uh, gyros mm. overall. It's one less component to add on and one less building material as well in survival. Uh, so adding a little extra fact, you make sure that you add yourself either an antenna or beacon. There's nothing worse than forgetting where you park the thing and losing all the time that you've actually spent building and designing your little rover. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.